morning everyone. Um, my name is Jackie and I am uh, Jackie of Jack's Creative Inspirations and I thought I would just kind of sit down and say hi and introduce myself to you all while I am taking a little bit of a mental break this morning um, and working on a diamond painting. Um, first I want to do a little bit of a disclaimer. This is an adult channel. If you are coming on here looking for crafts to uh, work on with your kids, or if you're under the age of 18, I would ask that you please not, um, if you're under the age of 18, please don't keep watching. Please go on by. Um, there will be some adult content. There will be the occasional swearing, um, maybe a few F-bombs um, along, the, along the line. Um, I have, have got a really snarky, uh, sarcastic gallows sense of humor that is not entirely appropriate for children um, so that being said if you are under 18 please don't be here um, if you find gallows humor offensive if you find snark offensive this is not the channel for you then either um, also you will hear things in the background I probably here in the beginning will be shooting a lot of raw video and just putting it up there, um, you will hear my dogs in the background. They live here. Um, and if that is troublesome to you, I'm really, really sorry about that. Um, but they are my children. Um, I, people always ask me how many kids I have. I always tell them my children are four-legged, fur-covered, and have speech impediments. So you will hear them barking from time to time. Um, I live in northern Nevada, just outside the capital city of Carson City, in a canyon on the side of a mountain, and I have wild horses roaming up and down the canyon. In fact, I've got a little family of four out there today. So every once in a while, my little three-quarter toy fox, one-quarter Jack Russell terrorist uh, decides to go out and think that she's the big boss of the group. And uh, she is the big boss of the group as long as they're on their side of the fence and she's on her side. So consequently, you'll hear a lot of background noises. Um, you'll probably hear me gulping from a bottle of tea or water. Like now. Uh, it's important to stay hydrated. Um, <clears throat> but welcome to my life. Um, I do have a website. Um, currently it is under... Um, renovations so uh, I won't I when I get it um, fully up and operational I will uh, post it and share it with you all you can also find me on my Facebook page Jack's Creative Inspirations <clears throat> and that's J-A-X apostrophe Creative Inspirations so who am I why now um, why why after having this little side business for several years why now am I going to be doing videos well for starters I'm at a bit of a crossroads in my professional life um, without going into great detail I am a registered nurse and my mother has I have been living with my mother since September of 2018 and been her primary caregiver. In January of this year, it is April 21st, 2020. So January 6th of 2020, my mom fell and broke her right upper arm and her left wrist. And she was in the hospital, been rehab for several weeks. I never left her side. I took care of her the entire time even though we were uh, together, or even though she was in the hospital and then in a rehab facility, I know the system, folks. I know what goes on. And I, because I know the system, it wasn't so much that I didn't trust the system. I just knew how things went and that nurses are short-staffed and very overworked even before this pandemic hit. And so I wanted to be with my mother and I wanted to take care of her. Um, and I did. Um, the 18th of March, however, she was very ill and I took her to the hospital. And that began a two and a half week long series of extremely traumatizing events. And my mother passed away on the 3rd of April. 
She did not have COVID-19. However, because of the pandemic, I was not allowed to be with her. I was not allowed to see her. I was not allowed to even see her body right after she passed. I had to wait until she was at the funeral home. So this whole series of events has been extremely traumatizing to me. And I am now facing going back to work. And uh, like I said, I'm kind of at a crossroads. And uh, so I'm seriously, seriously considering that uh, it's probably time, the Lord is probably telling me that it's time for me to go on and do something else uh, with my life and share my gifts and talents in another way. Um, also, um, because of all this that I've been through, crafting is my therapy. It's just very, very therapeutic for me. Um, I can kind of forget who I am for a little while and I can, um, you know, just, um, uh, get out the grief and the anger and all that, all, all that other fun grieving stuff, um, you know, in that way. So, um, also I, I've mentioned we are in the middle of a global pandemic. So right now we're isolating and sheltering in place and social distancing and, for someone who is very much a people person, um, it's very hard for me to not be able to hug someone or um, have that human contact with someone. Um, and so I'm finding that if I could just um, be um, find some way to connect with people, and right now it seems that socially and um uh, health-wise, the safest way to do that is through video, then maybe I can connect with somebody and, um, you know, grab your, grab your project that you're working on, grab a, a snack and a drink, and let's just sit and, and craft together and chat. Um, so, um, those are, you know, why now? Why, why am I doing this now? Why choose now? Um, so those are my big reasons. Uh, I'm at a crossroads with my career. I'm, uh, uh, I, this is my therapy and I find that I want to connect with people. So, um, what kind of crafts do I like to do? Wow. <laughs> there's a lot of crafts out there. And honestly, there's a lot of crafts that I have not tried and I know me. And so I make a conscious choice not to. To pursue them like you know glass blowing and weaving and pottery and um, um, a lot of those crafts a lot of crafts I love to dabble in so I love to dabble in mixed media I love to dabble in sorry I've got a diamond here that's not wanting to not wanting to lay straight um, so I like to uh, diamond painting is my current favorite and that's what this is this is a diamond painting and I'll explain what diamond painting is here in just a minute I also love to make jewelry um, there are some fantastic companies out there that um, make uh, wonderful kits and I subscribe to their monthly kit clubs so I will be doing videos where I will be working on the monthly kit clubs with some of the jewelry pieces um, I also love to make cards. Again, I also am uh, subscribed to a couple of monthly kit clubs from a couple of companies, and I like to um, I like to work on uh, on that and make greeting cards, um, and then also other forms of paper crafting. Again, back to mixed media. Um, also. Um, I like doing, I, I, I used to do the traditional scrapbooking. My scrapbooking style now has gone more to the digital um, because it's far easier to carry around a computer than it is an entire book, uh, an entire room full of paper crafting supplies. Not to mention it's far lighter. Um, but I also like to... Um, do memory preservation in that regard then um, as far as the the uh, scrapbooking goes I love helping people um, organize and share and tell their stories we all have a story to tell all of us um, and so I absolutely 
love, love, love helping people tell their stories. I love a good story. You'll find um, I have a nursing was a midlife career change for me. I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in speech communication and theater. And um, while it was fun, quote unquote, to act, I had I found a lot more fulfillment doing the behind the scenes work, designing the sets and designing the costumes and doing the lighting and building the sets. And that, that was fun for me. That was my thing. Um, I also, um, uh, have, uh, from this previous life, I have a minor in French. Um, and then I, I know some Spanish. Um, I know enough to say to a patient, um, hi, my name is Jackie and I'm your nurse for tonight. I'm really sorry, but my Spanish is really, really bad. I speak just a tiny little bit. And then people will get all kinds of excited and they'll start rattling off really rapid Spanish to me. And I'm like, stop, stop, slow down, slow down. <laughs> Please slow down. So, um, and then I will find at times that the French and the Spanish in my uh, in my brain, I'm, I'm still at that point where I'm trying to interpret or, or um, translate it in my brain before I say it. And so I get really confused and frustrated, and then the Sp and then the Spanish and the French kind of get all com commingled together. So forget about Spanglish. I, you know, it's mine's a little of everything. Um, and my other hobby that I like to do is sub is hoard craft supplies. Um, you know, um, people talk about it's um, you know there's a joke about um, I find that. Um, gathering craft supplies and actually using them are two separate things. Well, it's very true. Um, I also love to upcycle things. Um, some people see a glass jar and throw it in the trash and I'm like, no, 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 I can put something in there. <laughs> um, eventually I would love to be able to show you all my crafting space. Um, and I will be doing that, um, here soon, but I prefer, um, clear, uh, storage solutions. I don't like putting things in, in, in baskets um, because unfortunately I'm very much an out of sight, out of mind kind of person. And my other thing is, is that sometimes things are so disorganized that I start to clean things up and I find I've got three paper cutters because I couldn't find the other two. So I went out and got a third. You'll also find that um, I, I, I will be Blatant, I will be brutally honest with you. I have crippling depression and anxiety. And my two favorite ways of dealing or coping with my depression and anxiety are my, my two drugs of choice are food and retail therapy, also known as shopping. And um, I, I will be the first to admit that um, I often we'll just go out shopping just to be shopping. And unfortunately right now we can't be window shopping. And, um, so consequently I have to, um, I'm trying to work through all of this with a phenomenal counselor. Um, and, uh, just kind of realizing what those triggers are in my brain and working through them. So, um, let's see here. Sorry for all the ums. I had written out some notes here, so I'm shuffling, shuffling around my papers. So, exactly who am I? Um, well, I told you, my name is Jackie. I live outside of Carson City, Nevada. I was born in St. Joseph, Missouri. I have lived in Arizona, California, Florida, uh, Washington State, and then back to California and now Nevada. Um, this summer, uh, around Labor Day, I am moving back to the place I consider home, and that is the Seattle, Washington area. <clears throat> I'm going to flip this canvas real quick because my next area is up here at the top, and it's easier for me to reach if I flip it around like this. Um, I Seattle has... St. Joseph is the place of my birth, but Missouri is not my home. Um, 
I absolutely loved the desert in Southern California, Arizona. Um, you know, people make jokes about, well, it's a dry heat. Okay, stick your head in an oven and you'll get the dry heat. For someone who cannot really handle humidity, it was heaven. My asthma, I had no issues with my asthma, um, even though dust is one of my major triggers. I had absolutely no issues whatsoever with my asthma. Um, however, when I moved to the Pacific Northwest with my now ex-husband, who is still a very good friend of mine, um, I found that I absolutely loved it up there. I loved the, the scenery, the mountains around at all times. I loved the seasons. Um, you know, people joke about Seattle has no sun. Well, guess what? Seattle does have sun. Seattle, in the summertime, Seattle can go three months without a cloud in the sky or any significant rainfall. So in the wintertime, yes, it seriously, seriously bites um, in the wintertime because the daylight hours are so short. Um, so I turn on my ot light and sit under its, its near daylight properties and I feel better, especially because I'm sitting under my ot light crafting. Um, and so when my mom got sick, um, I realized, I mean, I love it. I love it here. I love this house I live in. Um, I was going to buy this house. I just, however, when mom got sick this last time and I was very isolated, I realized that I needed to be home and home is Seattle. So I have formulated the plan. I'm going to be putting the steps into motion. The first thing is going back to work. Um, so I'm going to be putting the steps into motion to actually get moved back to Seattle. Um, and I'm doing it um, by August. The travel restrictions and the virus and the isolation should be not as severe. Um, but I'm still telling everybody we are nowhere near the end of this virus. Um, anyway, so... Um, Wow, how did I get off on that tangent? Sorry about that. <laughs> so I was asking, who am I? Well, I'm a sister. I have two younger brothers. I have no sisters of my own. I have a very close-knit tribe of women around me, of which uh, four or five of them I call my sisters from another mister. Um, these are the four women that four or five women I can talk with about anything, and I mean anything. Um, I, um, and then I have, a, you know, a, the, the extended circle from that is very closely held friends. Um, I am a daughter. Both of my parents are deceased. My stepfather is also deceased. Um, but I'm a daughter, uh, an aunt. I have two nephews and two nieces. I am a great aunt. I have three great nieces and two great nephews. I am a niece. Uh, my mom was, uh, my mom has now six surviving siblings. Um, and so I have aunts and uncles and then I have aunts and uncles by marriage and by love. And I'm a cousin. And most importantly, my, my most important role is I am a fur mom. Um, I my, I no longer have my cats. They um, are not with me. I do not like referring to the Rainbow Bridge. I hate that poem. I, they just, they are not with me any longer. Um, although they are with me in spirit. I have two dogs. Um, Tony is um, 14 years old. He is a Basenji Chihuahua mix, and he is an absolute riot. <clears throat> he, uh, he is, uh, people, when people see him, it is a 50-50 reaction. Wow, that's the biggest Chihuahua I've ever seen, or, oh my God, what a beautiful Basenji. Um, and he is 
is um, he's just an absolute joy to be with. He has epilepsy. However, um, I have not had him on medication now for uh, a year, um, just over a year. Um, it was really, I'm, I'm really worried about the long-term damage it was doing to his liver. And it was, uh, the medication was making him rather aggressive. And so I made the unilateral decision that the quality of his life is far more important to me than the quantity. And um, all the medication did was make the seizures uh, less frequent and less severe. Uh, since I have discontinued his medications, he's really had not that many seizures at all. Uh, since the beginning of January, he's had one. So again, I'm, you know, I feel very good about that decision that I made. Um, my other fur child, her name is Pip. That is short for Pip Squeak. She is, like I said earlier, she's three quarters Toy Fox Terrier and one quarter Jack Russell Terrorist or Terrier. Um, she's little. She <laughs> and she too is a riot. She likes to go around pretending that she is a uh, Barney badass as long as she's on her side of the fence and you're on yours. <laughs> the second that... Um, you're on the same side of the fence as her, then she's a chicken and she'll run off. Uh, but these two are the reason I get out of bed in the morning. Um, not only because they're demanding to go outside and go for a walk, but because they're, they're what gets me up in the day. Um, they're what, they're what keeps me going. So who else am I? Um, I'm a nurse. I said that before. Um, a, a lot of people will say, you know, a nurse is what I do. It's not who I am. But I really feel very strongly, you know, I am a nurse. Um, I really feel sometimes that this is what God put me on the planet to do. Um, I do labor and delivery nursing and mother baby nursing and people are Oh, you do labor and delivery. It's always so happy there. No, it's not. It is not always happy. It's very stressful. Um, you are seeing people at their most vulnerable, most stressful time, most life-changing moments of their lives. And you're also, if you are not fortunate enough to be seeing people at that worst possible moment, it is always, always rewarding, even the worst possible moments, just to be able to be there with that couple and cry with them and let them talk and let them grieve and let them express. It is very rewarding for me. Um, I am a creative soul. I love being creative. Um, other than nursing, when I'm being creative, it's the time I feel the most alive. Um, and I also, it, this is a really weird one. I love to teach. I hate being a teacher. Um, my mom wanted me to be a teacher. She did not want me to go into theater. She did not want me to, she wanted me to have a second career to quote unquote fall back on. Thanks for the support there, Ma. Anyway, I I tried. I I really did. There was a couple of times that I was actually going for my Bachelor of Science in Education and decided instead to uh, pursue my BA, my Bachelor of Arts, and, uh, and uh, did that. I was going to go on and get my Master's in Fine Arts in Theatrical Design and teach in college, and decided no did not want to do that and instead <clears throat> in 1989 my father had a heart attack and I was watching the nurses working with him to keep him alive and realized wow I could I could so do this I could see myself doing this in 10 years and uh, so 1990. Four, 
I officially entered nursing school, graduated in 1996. So for 24 years now, I have been a nurse. And um, yeah, so longer than 10 years. <laughs> anyway, um, so the other thing that I am is I am a serial uh, multi-level marketing or direct sales person. Um, what that means is I tend to find a product I like and sign up to get the discount. <laughs> so in the past, I have tried to sell Mary Kay, Stampin' Up, Creative Memories, but now I'm currently on my second go around with Creative Memories. I literally signed up just to get the discount. Um... Let's see, I've also done Dove Chocolate Discoveries, which is now known as the Cocoa Exchange. And as soon as I'm back on my feet again, um, financially, from having these five weeks off, um, I'm going to rejoin them because they have some phenomenal products. Um, and Young Living Essential Oils. And so I am planning on doing uh, some videos with the Young Living Essential Oils um, to make some homemade, um, you know, like, like bath bombs and such like that and cleaning items that are free from chemicals and all the nasty things and much better for the environment and yourself. Um, and then the other company that I'm currently with is called Forever. I'm an ambassador with Forever. Like I said earlier, I love um, helping people preserve and um, share and tell their stories. Well, Forever is a company that helps people get their, their photos, um, their documents, video, audio, um, all of these items in your legacy, they will store them digitally on a private server, just your server. Nobody else owns it. Nobody else can get into it um, for your lifetime plus 100 years, which means that as formats change, the, the technology changes, they will keep the formats up with the technology. And... Um, it is something that you can then turn over to your grandchildren, your children, your grandchildren, their grandchildren for generations to come. And um, I will put a link below to my forever site. And if you would like to uh, know more about it, please feel free to let me know. And I'm more than happy to uh, share with you how that works. Um... So, what you can expect from me in the future um, are uh, working on things that we call a WIP. A WIP is a W-I-P or a work in progress. Um, there are many different projects that I have that I will be doing uh, WIPs on. Um, mostly diamond painting. And again, this is um, what... Um, uh, to, I'm working on today. I also have projects from jewelry making. I have projects from card making. I have tons of projects. And then I'm also sorting and processing through uh, family photos um, to share with my, my family. Um, so today, um, when I, I started to tell you... Um, I'm taking a bit of a mental break before I start my day. Um, by, um, I've been sorting through my mom's clothes and um, I got a, a washer and dryer over the weekend and got it all connected and set up and going and I was doing my second load last night and I walked into the laundry room and there was water everywhere. So apparently somewhere along the line I have not connected the drain hose correctly and so the water was draining right out all over the floor well the upside of all that is my laundry room floor is nice and clean um but i am 
now waiting for my landlord to get my message that I need his help and have him come over here and help me get this drain hose fixed so that I can continue on with laundry. Um, and uh, anyway, so let me explain to you a little bit what I've been doing here. <clears throat> so this is um, this is a diamond painting um, I will show you it's from a company called paint with diamonds paint with diamonds it is the canvases are always measured in centimeters so this is 25 by 30 centimeters um, 10 centimeters is roughly 4 inches so it's roughly 12 or 13 inches high and oh one popped off 12 or 13 inches high by um about um eight inches or nine inches across um it is called through my door um i will see if i can find um, the link to the original um project but this is what it looks like it's a very fuzzy picture and i apologize for that but it's a couple in an embrace. Um, he and her, or him and her. Um, but um, it is, I, I fell in love with this piece and I've had it in my stash for several years now and I'm finally getting around to doing it. Um, someday I will share my stash of diamond paintings. Diamond paintings, um, what is diamond painting? Well, diamond painting, if you want to think about it this way, it's kind of a baby um, if uh, paint by numbers and mosaic and counter cross stitch got together in a thruffle and had a baby, it would be a diamond painting. Um, I absolutely love doing counter cross stitch. Unfortunately, I have a really bad carpal tunnel in my hands because of repetitive work over the years. And my hands, my fingers are perpetually numb. Um, so when I try to do county cross stitch, trying to hold the needle and do all the fine motor work, my hands go completely dead and I can't hold anything. And so it gets very frustrating for me. I'm going to be investigating getting a lap stand or an actual, um, um, you know, a stand of some sort that I could hold my work on and then go back and, you know, I'll ultimately go back to uh, doing counter cross stitch again. I have a diamond that has popped off of the canvas, which is a common occurrence with these. And I'm trying, ah, there it is, way up there. <laughs> Y'all are sitting there going, damn it, Jackie, it's clear up there. Can't you see it? Um, anyway, um, so the canvas is marked with these little squares and the squares there we go the squares have symbols on them so you match the symbols and i'm going to do this kind of at an angle so there's the symbols and that's the color number and if you're familiar with county cross stitch and you're familiar with dmc floss the colors are all numbers so these match dmc color numbers some companies don't do that, but majority of companies do. And so you just place the diamonds, which these are diamonds. They're little pieces of rosin that are faceted. And you, and then this is sticky. It's double-sided tape. And you take the diamond. So like this is the little missing guy right here. And you put it on the canvas down in there come on lay down in there and be be good just like that and then as you fill in the pieces it's like a mosaic and it becomes this painting or a photo um several of my works I've given away um I still have several here um someday in a future video I promise I will show you works that I've completed and I will show you works that I have um, uh, that are in my stash to be done. I have several that are really huge, uh, like several feet by several feet. 
I have some that are very small. Um, and then I have, um, uh, I have some that are in between. Um, so consequently, um, this is, so this is what I'm working on today. I, let's see, we've been now 35 minutes. Um, and I can, let's see, I need to change colors because I'm done with all this color. So how my process for doing this is kind of weird, but I'll go into it in more depth in another video. I'm right-handed. So, and this is always covered with a sticky substance, whether it's glue or double-sided tape. And being right-handed, if I'm working my way across like this, or I'm coming across from left to right, I'm dragging my hand through all that sticky material. So I start, if I'm doing a counted cross stitch, I start in the middle and work my way out. With this, I start on the right side and work my way across. These are columns of 10 squares across. So I went through and I marked out 10 columns, 10 columns, 10 columns, you know, or 10, 10, and, and then I scored this cover, this opaque cover sheet. I scored it very lightly with a, a, a straight knife. And then I just exposed one column of 10 at a time. And then I do my, I do, I fill in. So I start at the top of the list of colors and go down through the list of colors, fill in this column. When the column's filled in, I pull off this piece of paper and I start in on the next column. So I work my way from right to left and typically try to do, even as I'm filling in, if you were watching me fill in down here, I was working my way from right to left so that I wasn't dragging my hand through the, through the tape. It's bad enough that I now have my dogs. My dogs have been in foster care since the beginning of January. And now my dogs are back. So now I have dog fur everywhere. And so it's bad enough I have dog fur and dust because I live in the desert. And so I'm trying very hard to get these done as I uncover them and not leave them uncovered for them to be covered up with stuff that will make them no longer sticky. Um, so that's my process on how I work on these paintings. And I will, again, um, in a future video, I will go through and I will, um, um, go through all that step by step for you and you can see how I do it. Um, there are a lot of other, um, YouTubers that I follow that, um, have their, uh, have their own processes. Um, the biggest ones are, uh, Rachel Ray, um, not the chef. She spells her name R-A-E. Uh, Rachel Ray. Um, Crafting with Mrs. Crochet and Coffee. That's another channel I follow. Stitcherista is a third channel that I follow. Um, and there is no right or wrong way for doing this. Just as there's no right or wrong way for doing any craft out there. Um, you know, everybody has their own system that works for them. This is what works for me. It's no skin off my nose if you don't want to do it like that. And hey, you want to follow me? That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. I honestly, I can't think of anything else right now at this time. I've probably bored you to tears and you're all going, oh my God, will this woman ever shut up? It's blatantly obvious that I have a degree in speech and theater. I just, you know, it's been one of those kind of days. So the dogs are starting to get a little restless. Um, they're wanting to go out and go for a quick walk. So I do need to let them do that. And we're, it's 39 minutes, so we're coming upon 40 minutes here. I think I've chattered long enough and chattered your arms and legs off. But I do hope that you'll join me again um, if you hit that subscribe button. Um, and uh, I can, I will be, my goal is to be putting out at least one video a week, if not more. I will be working when I work, I'll be working three nights a week, which means that I'll be losing about four days a week because I usually that, that fourth day I'm catching up um, from working, you know, and I prefer to work my nights in a row. So I will be, I will be here as much as I possibly can. I pray that you find that this is something that you would like to follow along with and um, we can be in this together. 
and I want to wish you all a very happy, blessed day. Uh, keep crafting, keep saying, keep washing your hands. Don't touch yourself. Don't cut, touch your face. You know, um, even when they're telling us it's okay to go outside, don't go rushing outside. Give it some time. Um, I love you all. My deepest hugs. Bye-bye, guys. Love you.